what what I love so much about Jeffrey's approach, um, what's been so most meaningful to me, I think, um, and this is something Jeremy and I have talked about many times, is that when you get the thinking process, you don't really care anymore about whether it's five element or it's Shang Han Lun or it's acupuncture or it's herbs or it's essential oils, because there's an underlying thinking process that's there. And then you can be like, okay, I'm going to treat you with coffee and incense, or I'm going to treat you with acupuncture, or I'm going to treat you with whatever, because it's just the thinking process rather than the tool. Where TCM tends to be acupuncture is this, or source points are that, or mood points are this, or whatever. Um, and it's the, the beauty of that approach, at least in my experience, is the, how it teaches us to think, which gives us such freedom. Um, but it's challenging because we have to learn to think in a different way. Um, so within the, the paradigm, one of the things that we like to, to look at is trying to see the bigger picture of what's going on with the person, but then also being able to differentiate where is that going on? And in the Taoist model, there's sort of the idea of the three Dantian, right? You have the lower Dantian, the middle Dantian, the upper Dantian. And they represent areas of the body, but they also represent bigger concepts of like the lower Dantian representing the Jing, right? The middle Dantian representing the Shen, the, sorry, the, the Qi, and the upper Dantian representing the Shen. And Jing Qi Shen as a concept represents the physical world, the Jing, the density of the physical body. Qi represents this idea of what occurs in the space between things. So when you hold a positive magnet and a positive magnet, the vibration that occurs between those two spaces, the interaction between them, that's the Qi, right? The Qi isn't my hand or my other hand. The Qi is what's happening in the empty space between. It's the interaction between the two, the relationship. And then Shen represents the idea of spirit. And so we also want to, when we're feeling the pulses of our patient or we're interacting with the patient, as we can ask ourselves, is this something that is in their physical body? Is this something that is in their emotional body? Or is this something that is part of their spiritual curriculum or their spiritual body? Um, because how we go about treating sh by default should be different. Right. If you're working with somebody who has shoulder pain because of a spiritual problem or emotional problem, how you treat them will be different than if they have shoulder pain because they were hit by a car. And maybe they had a spiritual crisis that caused them to step out in front of the car and we can go down a, an infinite pathway of what ifs. But the basic idea is that sometimes there are things that are really purely physical and sometimes there are things that are purely emotional and sometimes there are things that are purely spiritual but for most of us there's some degree of interaction between all three of those but there's a primary right there's a primary cause this is from my physical lifestyle this is from my physical trauma um this is part of my emotional patterning this is from an emotional trauma or this is a bigger existential spiritual experience our drive as individuals we share a drive towards medicine probably because of some degree of a spiritual similarity we care about medicine we may not even really be able to say why we can give lots of reasons why but there's just an intrinsic drive to be interested in medicine that's really coming from a spiritual level but maybe you were young and somebody really close to you died and it was really traumatic. You saw the medical system fail and you're really driven emotionally to study medicine because you feel like the medical system is really wrong and you want to change it. Um, or maybe somebody has a shoulder injury and they get treated for it and they're just really driven because they think it's very interesting physically. They're just fascinated with this physical study of the body. Um, and so when we're working with a patient, we're trying to sort of identify 
what level is something coming from? What is primary in their disease pattern and their physiological pattern? And it's never, regrettably, like, like TCM, it's never black and white that it's only the emotions or it's only the physical. Um, but usually one part of it will stand out. And they might be coming to us for something that is purely physical, but have all these other complex emotional patterns, spiritual patterns, and all that. And if they're not coming for the emotional work, then it's not really, at least in my opinion, it's not really our job to treat that. They're not ready to step into that space yet. But we can ask questions about it. We can engage with them and see if they bite, see if they're interested in going there. Um, and still, when we do our treatments, we need to always know what's going on on all levels as much as possible so we can make our treatments as effective as possible. Um, and there's this fine line between, you know, so say somebody comes in with um, shoulder pain and they have a lot of emotional frustration, but they're coming to you for their physical shoulder pain. When we go in and we do a treatment where we move blood and we move chi to treat the pain, which would be the classic TCM approach for treating pain is invigorate chi and blood. The emotions are stored in the blood. The memories are stored in the blood. If we go back to basic TCM theory, right? And when you invigorate the blood, that means you invigorate the emotions. It's not just treating a, a bruise, a hematoma. It's moving the blood, the shen, the spirit, the emotions. And so when you're treating them for their shoulder pain and they have a big emotional release that they weren't expecting, you can understand why that happened. Because the blood moved and their pain should get better. And you can see the correlation. And that's one of the things that we try to look for is that I move the blood the pain gets better. I move the blood, the emotion moves. I move the blood, a memory comes out of dormancy. They experience a memory because the memories are stored in the blood. The liver stores the blood. Um, and that starts to explain all the responses we see in the patients when they're on the table. We do a treatment and we get the side effect, which is not a negative side effect. It's a positive side effect, but it's still a side effect. We can start to understand why that happens. You move the blood, memories start to float up into their mind, emotions start to come up, and a bruise gets better, right? Because that three-body model of physical body, emotional body, spiritual body, they all interact. So when you treat the physical, it will affect the emotional. When you treat the physical, it will affect the spiritual. Um, and that starts to explain the sort of what's often called the magic of Chinese medicine, right? So I came to you for my ankle pain and suddenly I had this big flashback to my childhood and this deep childhood trauma was, was treated, was resolved. And that's because those three things are, are linked together. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Anybody who's done this type of work, I think, will have had a few of those uh, those bumps, <laughs> those experiences. Um, so part of the way that I look at things is I'm always trying to understand what part of the body am I trying to work with? And we can do that via pulses where you feel, you know, the the pulse at the surface, the pulse partway through the vessel or the pulse down at the bone. That would be the Wei Qi, that would be the Ying Qi, that would be the Yuan Qi, right? Does that make sense? You feel the what's happening at the surface of the body, the sur surface of the vessel. You feel what's happening in the middle of the vessel. And you feel what's happening at the base of the vessel, the, the deepest part of the vessel. And the pulses will be totally different. You know, up here, it might be floating out or it might be really constricted. Down here, it might be scattering. Um, and if you just slow down and hang out with the pulses, um, you'll be able to start to pick some of that stuff up. Um, and that starts to give us an idea of what's happening. 
in each of those bodies, where is the pulse the strongest? So if you're looking at like really basic pulse taking, sometimes they'll say like, you feel the pulses, where is the pulse the biggest? Where is the pulse the smallest? Right? And so you can feel the pulses and say, okay, there's the most activity in the liver pulse. There's the most activity in the lung pulse and the spleen pulse or whatever it is. And where is it the most efficient? But really you want to ask yourself, at those three levels, which one is the most active, which one is the most efficient, and then you start to study the relationship between them. Why might the yin level be interacting with the wei level in this way? And that's where pulses get more complex. Um, but we'll try to just keep building on that over the course of of calls as we look at specific cases and try to to kind of decipher things. Um, When we have that language of the three bodies or the three qi, the wei qi, ying qi, yuan qi, we now have the five channel systems that give us ways to interact with those things. So the at the most exterior of the body, you could say six channel systems if you want to put the cutaneous regions, but most people don't really treat the cutaneous regions. Um, so most of the time when we talk about the exterior, we talk about the sinew channels. And within the sinew channels just flows Wei Qi. Within the low channels is just Ying Qi. Within the primary channels is Wei Qi and Ying Qi. Within the eight extras is just Yuan Qi. And within the divergent channels is Yuan Qi and Wei Qi. But no Ying Qi. And so depending on what part of the person we want to work with, each of those channel systems will be more or less efficient. If I want to work with your DNA, working with the sinew channels is going to be a really... Um, slow way to get there. Not a very efficient way because the sinew channels don't touch a yin qi and they don't touch yuan qi. So it means the way you'd have to affect the wei qi enough that it can begin to affect the yin qi. And then the yin qi eventually can affect the yuan qi. It's a very indirect way to get to treating the yuan qi level. If you're trying to affect the wei qi level, working with the eight extras would also be a very slow way to get there. So using the Du channel or the Dai Mai or the Chong Mai to treat a sprained ankle doesn't make sense, right? Because you're really looking, this is for a sprained ankle that is really just a mild sprained ankle. Using the eight extras to treat a common cold, which is just a weakness of the exterior, doesn't make sense in terms of how the channels are laid out for what chi they affect in the body. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and so when we look at what level of the body is being affected in the, in the patient, is it their physical body, is it their emotional body, is it their spiritual body? We also want to ask what level of chi is being affected as well. So then it could start to guide us towards which channel system we want to treat. TCM mostly works with the primary channels. It affects Wei Qi and Ying Qi, Qi and blood. And you can do a lot with that. Um, but it's not the most effective thing for working with genetic disorders. Um, because it doesn't really directly touch the Yuan Qi level. And what we want to be able to do is to begin to understand what each of those three levels represents and then be able to integrate that with the person that's there in front of us. When you first meet your client, your patient, it's probably not the most realistic to think you're going to treat their eight extras because the eight extras are the deepest part of them. That facet of them isn't probably going to be deeply open. 
to you because they don't have relationship with you yet, right? They're not ready to like just bear their soul and open up on that deepest layer. It doesn't mean you can't do any extra treatment, but it might be more efficient to develop some degree of rapport and trust and, and safety with them before you try to probe those deeper layers. Um, that said, if it's a genetic disorder and that's really what's called for, then that's what you do. Um, but each one represents a certain degree of intimacy with the person as well. When you first meet somebody, what you're interacting with is the Wei Qi. You're not really getting heart to heart. You're not going deep into a sharing of blood, if you will, a sharing of emotions, a sharing of, of experience. You're just sort of, you're getting to know each other in a way like we are right now, right? This is still sort of relatively Wei Qi level interaction. But as we interact more and more, you get to know my personality. You get to know like, oh yeah, this is the way Justin is in this situation. That's the way Justin is in that situation. This is how he is. And you can make fun of me. I can make fun of you. We can laugh at each other. We can laugh with each other. We can give each other a hard time. And our relationship drops in a little bit more intimate, right? And then as we go deeper and deeper, we get to know each other's life histories. We get to connect on a deeper sort of soul spiritual level where it's like, you can see my pain, you can see my experiences, you can see my personality, but at a, at a much deeper layer. And I'm open to sharing that with you because I trust you because I have this relationship where I can go to you for a treatment and lay on the table and really just allow all the shit to come out of the closet. Right. I, I don't have to have any armoring around you, but to do an aid extra treatment, with somebody who's very armored, there'll be this internal resistance within the patient because they're not ready to open up to that. And it's not that your clinical skills are lacking. You may have done the perfect treatment, needled the opening point, did the right technique, needled all the points along the pathway that were the right points to do. Your diagnosis on pulses could have been exactly perfect. All of that could have been right. But when their spirit isn't ready to open up into you, into your presence and be that vulnerable, it's just not ready. It has nothing to do with your treatment per se, right? And that's like on the fly, that's one of the harder things to judge of like, how do we, how do we keep creating that sacred space for a patient on the table so they can go as, as deep as their situation needs maybe they don't need to go that deep but maybe they do and so how do we just create that space so that we can treat them at whatever level is is necessary um, to help whatever symptoms they're coming in with you know any any questions with that No, it's all good. Yes. Um, so do you have experience with any of the, those five channel systems that you would like to sort of look at, or do you want to go more detail into one particular channel system? Do you want to talk about herbs or essential oils or like, where can I, it's sort of like, that's a, quite a bit of information to chew on. So I don't want to, I don't want to like. <laughs> give too much and then have it just be sort of a short circuit. Um, but I want to kind of try and my, my hope would be that with each call, we can kind of present some information. Have you kind of reached that point where it's like, wow, that's a lot. And there's a lot of ways to go with that and chew on it and then try to chew on it a little bit here. Try to like pull out some practical examples. So that way, when you leave the call, not only do you just have general theory to think about, you actually have some examples to connect to that so that it's, you can continue chewing in between calls, right? You can go into clinic, you can go into school and see somebody with shoulder pain or see somebody that's emotionally uptight and be like, oh, I see that showing up. Mm -hmm. um, so that can be personal experience, something that you've worked with individually. It could be, and it could be any of the five channels. It doesn't really matter. 
whether we start from the adextras or we start from the senior channels or we bounce back and forth, none of those things really, because it's all interconnected, it doesn't really matter which one we, we start with. Um, 